Hi, I'm going to talk you through the Unit 4, Lesson 4, Desmos activity. So in this, we'll start on slide 2, walking half as much again. So the first one is Jada's pet turtle walked 10 feet and then half that length again. Might think she walks 10 and then half of 10 is 5, so 10 plus 5 is 15. For her baby brother, he goes 3 feet and then half of that again, so 3 plus half of 3, which is 1 and a half, so he walks 4.5 feet. Jada's hamster walked 4.5 feet and then half of that and half of 4.5 is 2.25. This one I might end up going something like 4.5 plus 2.25 just to keep track and that is 6.75 feet. Uh, the next one, robot walked one foot and half of that again. One plus a half, that's just 1.5. And then I have a couple options here for the x. I can think literally kind of what I'm doing. x plus half of x, which I might write in fraction form like this. I might notice that it's x plus 0.5x if I go in decimal form. Or I might notice that here we have this constant of proportionality. Everything's being multiplied by 1.5. So when we're doing x and then half of x, we're really doing one whole x and another half of x, which is in turn 1.5x. So any of these end up being okay expressions here. So moving on to slide three, it kind of talks about that difference where my wrote x plus a half x and Kieran wrote y equals three halves x. If you notice y equals three halves x, three halves is the same as one and a half. That's the improper fraction version of this mixed number, one and a half, which is equivalent to that 1.5. So notice if we have this x right here, which is an invisible 1x, 1x plus 1 half x, these end up being equivalent because this 1 plus 1 half is still 1 and a half. So I agree with both of them. These are correct expressions for this. And as we said before, um, x plus 1 half x, notice that's the same as um, 1x plus one half x, which is the same as uh, one plus one half times x. So and one and one half is the same as three halves x. So these are equivalent expressions. Okay, so here we're going to match the situation with the diagram. And it's possible to have matches or may have uh, no matches or multiple matches. So if we say Han bought x pounds of apples and my bought two thirds of that, we're looking for a full um, amount and then the next one to be two-thirds. So it looks like diagram C. The first one's a full or three-thirds. The bottom one has two-thirds of that whole, so these guys should match. If I look at this one, Han ate X ounces of blueberries and my ate one-third less. If you have one-third less, you start out with the full and then you're missing one-third. So again, that one also matches this. One third less looks like it's two thirds of, so those also match. When I look at my, my bike's X miles and Han bikes two thirds more than that. So this time if Han's going, here's the full X, and then notice these extra two thirds of the original. So it looks like B matches with an extra two thirds on the original. And if we check, these two wouldn't have a match. Great job, we've gotten them all correct. On slide six, you're just going to try to write a story for one of the diagrams that doesn't have a match. Um, and you have options here, so hopefully it won't look exactly like mine. But I notice in this one, if we start with X as the original, it looks like Y has a little extra one-third compared to X. So I might say something like, Derek read X books. Emilia read one-third more than that. That goes with story A. I might also cho choose something for D. So here I might say something like, Matt ate X chocolates. Rebecca ate, I might say two thirds less than that. I might also say ate one third of that. There's a lot of options here, but it, it's getting smaller than the original. All right, so here it looks like Aaron solved X math problems and Aiden solved three-fourths more than that. So if we have Y equals, we have 
right down here, this looks like Aiden down at the bottom and Aaron's this original X. So it looks like Aiden. We might have a couple options and we'll see what does most likes. But I might say Y equals if Aaron was X and then Aiden was three fourths more than that, I might say plus three fourths X. That would be called an unsimplified equation. It asks me above, can I also simplify it? So I might say this, I have this full x plus a 3 fourths, I might say it's 1 and 3 fourths x. So I might change this to y equals 1 and 3 fourths, whoops, I didn't like that spacing, 3 fourths x. Um, I'll try to get rid of that. Sometimes this formatting is funky. If it doesn't like the mixed number, we can always try it in improper fraction form as well. Let's see if it likes this. So it, it's not going to accept that mixed number. So I'm going to change it 4 times 1 and add the 3. We're going to have 7 fourths. And you can kind of notice above here, you almost see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of these fourths is another way to help. All right, Sarah ran X miles and Carly ran 1 fourth less than that. If I wanted to go, I could start out with a, an unsimplified version. I might say Y equals X, the full X, minus, because it's 1 fourth less, 1 fourth of X. I could submit that, and that's the unsimplified, but I'm also going to try to simplify it. So notice I had all of these 4 fourths of the full X, and I took away 1 fourth of them. So I was left with Y equals 3 fourths X. We always start with this one whole, one original, and then go up or down from there. All right, so for this one, we're going to go unsimplified, which is the long version, and simplified, which is the short version, and see if we can get this relationship between X and Y. So in the first one, I'm going to notice here's my X, and then there's this extra one-third X. So it looks like Y equals X plus one-third X. When I simplify it, it looks like y equals four-thirds x. I could say one and a third, but I noticed before I didn't like that, so I'm going to try just that four-thirds improper. In b, if I start with this x, which is in three parts, and then we have two more of them, y equals x plus two-thirds x. If I want to simplify it, it looks like y equals five-thirds x. For c, it looks like I started with this full three-thirds x, but I took away one of them to get to y, so y equals x minus one-third x, and it looks like what, what was left is y equals two-thirds x. And then for the final one, we started with a full x, but two-thirds of them are missing, so y equals x minus two-thirds x, and what's left there, we just have y equals one-third x. On slide 10, you're going to actually get an x equals equation too. So notice here y equals four-thirds x, but x, if y is the original, x is then only three out of the four pieces that originally y was, so we have x equals three-fourths y. And you might notice something really cool about these two equations. They are reciprocal, these two proportional equations when you switch the variables. The constant of proportionality is reciprocals, just like we worked on in unit two. So in this one, notice how y is now into five pieces and x is three of them. So x equals three-fifths y. Again, reciprocals. Here, the original y is only made up of two of these pieces of x, and x is three of them. So x equals three-halves y. Again, whoa, reciprocals. And one more time, y equals one-third x. Well, here y is only one part, and x is three times as big, so we could say x equals 3y. Notice again, three and one-third are reciprocals. So in a synthesis, you want to just notice when we had an x plus three-fourths x, and we're trying to use distributive property to simplify it, we can change that to one x plus three-fourths x. And then we can notice in distributive property says that we can take out that x we can have the 1 plus 3 fourths combine that together multiplied by x to give us 1 and 3 fourths is just 7 fourths times x. Similar, in the bottom one, we can change that to 1n minus 5 eighths n. Then we can write that as 1 minus 5 eighths 
times n, and 1 minus 5 eighths is 3 eighths, so we have 3 eighths n. So we can simplify by changing this naked number that doesn't have a coefficient, put a 1 in front of it, and then combine those coefficients and multiply it by the variable. All right, that is a wrap for today's Desmos lesson.